welcome back to our fun little end of the month chat sesh where I just fill you in on a bunch of things that have been going on in my life, things that are going on with the channel, and we just hang out and have a little bit of fun together. Um, before I jump into things too, too much, I did want to give a huge shout out to the Him Ciders that joined our fun little club this month. That includes Tracy, Jennifer, Dolores, and Catherine. Welcome, you guys. We've been having a lot of fun over on Patreon. Um, obviously, all of the first impression videos, they get early access to that. Um, we did a little like test live stream. I'll tell you a little bit more about that here later. But um, it was it was fun because really nobody knew what they were doing. <laughs> And so we were all kind of just trying to figure it out together. But once we got the hang of it, it was a lot of fun. Check the description box if you want to join and become part of our little insider group. Okay, I also have a bunch of different updates for you guys. First off, today was the day that I picked the Clover giveaway winner. Um, you know that I've been doing the skill series for the past eight weeks and if you commented on any of those videos you were entered to win this clover prize pack with like dozens of different clover uh tools and notions so gail blakely is our winner i also wanted to update you on the hair situation so this past month has been no blow dry july and i swear i have not turned on my hair dryer one single time all month long and I kind of expected more to happen. But isn't that how we all work? We want instant gratification, right? But really nothing happened. <laughs> nothing really changed at all, I don't think. Um, I did go to dinner with some girlfriends that I hadn't seen since the beginning of the uh, quarantine and they said that it looked thicker and fuller, which I appreciate. But I don't know that that has anything to do with the actual quality of my hair. I think it just has to do with it being more like frizzy and full. Another thing that I thought was really interesting about it is like we're talking about like preventing damage to your hair. But what I found is that when I'm not drying it, I wash it a lot more. And so I'm like, well, is that really better? Like to strip my hair of all those natural oils and stuff more often is that better than not blow drying it is the expectation that i should not do either of those things because i think that's just asking for too much and i am getting a new blow dryer that is supposed to like protect your hair better as it blow dries and also require it to be under the heat the high heat for less time also i'm dying to share with you guys how the garden is turning out so if you remember last month i left you guys with a cliffhanger where i had drowned my basil it filled up the container with water when it rained and i was convinced that i had drowned my little baby basils well i'm happy to report they are alive and thriving i am this close to being able to harvest it <laughs> to make some pesto which I am so excited about the like initial blooms are tall and it's filling out in the bottom and it's just so 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 exciting and so because I was successful with that I decided are you gonna come in I'm gonna give you guys a sunny update here shortly too I left the door open to see if he would come in on his own so we'll see if he just finds his way in here my elderly epileptic baby um so i went ahead and got a whole herb situation happening so i have them all i have mint i have sage cilantro um chives mustard greens all the basics i can't even remember all of them i think there's like 12 or so out there and then I went ahead and got a little fern and I got a couple flowers and it's just like a whole thing is happening and I'm just so, so, so excited about it. I love looking at all my little patio and seeing all my little babies just thriving. And like when it starts to rain or get too windy, I get scared for them and I get nervous. Like I hope they're going to be okay. Um, so speaking of the patio though, you guys have probably noticed by now I have been filming 
on the patio a lot lately. And that is, that comes from two things. One, the time of Corona where we have to wear the masks everywhere. Like I just don't feel comfortable going out to a park or like a mural or even like a shopping center. Like I just, I don't feel great about doing that. Not just because I won't have a mask on when I'm filming my outfits, but also like, I just don't wanna make other people uncomfortable. It's already like a weird thing to see someone standing there with a tripod posing in their outfits. Like that's already bizarre enough, but then to not have the mask on and are they gonna yell at me? Like, I just don't wanna deal with that. So I had been filming on top of my garage of my apartment, but that's just like sad and, sterile and well dirty gray boring like it's not cool or modern or cute in any way and so I was like well this isn't really reflective of me and kind of you know the vibe that I want to put out on the channel like it's convenient and nobody's ever up there so I'm you know isolated and all alone and that's great but I started thinking about my patio and started thinking about how it was really underutilized in the summer. Like I'm out there a lot in the fall and spring and even a lot in the winter because, you know, they're kind of mild here. You can bring a blanket out there. Um, there's even a plug so you can do a heated blanket situation, which is really extra and special. But in the summertime with the heat and humidity, it's just like I never go out there. It's a barren land. And so I thought, okay, let's make this cute. Let's figure out a way to get like a good background going um, so that I could actually film out there. It solves all the problems with the Corona, it solves all the problems with me like feeling awkward about filming in public um, and I'll have a cute patio to boot. So I spent like 150 bucks, not a ton, um, and kind of like decorated out there. And so you've seen some of that in some of my Make It Monday videos, like all of the Rayon videos were filmed out there. And a lot of you are noticing because you're starting to comment about how much you like it. So that's been great. I'm gonna do a whole video on like each area because most of it is DIY. That was how I was able to get it so, get it done for so cheap. Uh, the most expensive part was this flooring that I got from Ikea. It's like interlockable like tiles it's really really cool um but that's what i spent most of my money on everything else was pretty much a diy or like a thrifted type of project he keeps walking by the door but he doesn't come in um so yeah i'm gonna do a, a whole little video series on that it'll be more like decor diy than sewing but i think that a lot enough of us do a little bit of crossover with that so hopefully you guys will enjoy it okay what shopping did i do this month i really didn't do a lot because i was doing the patio uh that's where most of my budget went for this month um i did buy fabric and sew out there like the cushions there he is Let me see if I can get him to come over here. Come here. All right, you guys, here's Sonny. And don't judge his haircut. I've been doing it myself um, because he doesn't like them anymore. He's mostly blind, a lot of deaf, and epileptic now. So he's having seizures once a week, sometimes more often. They don't last very long and they don't seem to have lasting effects, but they are really scary. So, you know, we don't know how much more time we'll have with him, but we're cherishing all the moments now and loving on him as much as we can. He doesn't like to be held very much either. That's why he's like kind of shaking. But that's my sunny buns. He's 14. He's a Maltese. Okay, 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 okay. Um, so we're just doing the best we can with him and kind of rolling with the punches and just trying to make, you know, the end of his life as calm and painless as possible. So I know you guys ask about him a lot, which is so, so sweet. I love that. So there's your update on Sunny. I'm sorry. It wasn't more like happy, <laughs> uh, but that's where we are. That's where we are with him. There is your Sunny update. <laughs> okay. But back to the things that I bought for this month. Um, so I did buy some outdoor fabric for 
the cushions and little accent pillows. Um, and I'll talk to you guys about those when I do the patio video. But clothing wise, I, after I posted the forget me not pattern first impression, uh, she reached out to me on Instagram and was very grateful, very sweet. Um, just like the first two people that we covered in that series, she said that she had taken some notes and was going to make some changes based on, you know, my constructive criticism, which I think is great. Like I'm not going to these sites trying to tell these people what to do with their businesses. I'm just experiencing their website and their patterns truly for the first time. And, you know, if things work well, great. If they don't work well, then I'm, you know, then I'm going to point that out. It's just kind of like a stream of consciousness, kind of what comes to mind. So if they can find some little ways to make improvements, like I know when you're working on a website, you can get so, or any project really, you can get so like numb to that project that you don't see everything. And you, you know, you don't think about every single user aspect of it. So to have somebody completely unbiased come in and review it inside and out, um, I think it's great that they are able to, um, you know, find ways to make small improvements to the site based on, you know, what I have to say. But she reached out and said um, that she would gift me one of her patterns. So I was like, okay, sure. Um, and I didn't really think it through that much. I just instinctively said the iris tee, which is the one that has the little pleat detail. If I could do it again, I might have gone with um, one of the patterns where she said she had like the sneaky, special, professional way to finish facings. Because I really feel like I could have learned something new with that. So I got the iris pattern is what I'm trying to tell you guys. And believe it or not, despite all of this fabric, so this whole side over here, the closest to the wall, is all knit fabric. But I don't like any of it for t-shirts. I don't. I think what happened was early on, I found my affinity for rayon. And I just assumed that rayon was made everything better. And so I bought all the rayon jersey and then sewed a couple t-shirts and realized I don't like rayon jersey. I don't. Maybe that's an unpopular opinion, but it's too thin. It's too difficult to work with. Like, I'm not a fan. I do. I did realize and learn that what I do love is cotton jerseys and like cotton blended jerseys. Like I like my t-shirts to have a little bit more oomph to them. Like I like my t-shirts to not be lightweight and drapey, you know? I like for them to be breathable and that's what the cotton provides, but I think I prefer a more structured t-shirt. Um, and so, especially with that sleeve detail, you really need something kind of structured to hold those darts and pleats and whatever else is going on in there. Um, so I went shopping at fabric.com and I got four different, four completely different, not just four different colors, but four completely different cotton jerseys. And I'm going to do kind of like how I did with Crinkle Rayon Week. I'm going to do Cotton Jersey Week exclusively featuring the iris pattern. Now, I'm not just going to make four of the same irises either. You guys know me by now. I'm going to do um, a couple different versions that she offers in the pattern pack, but I'm also going to hack it um, to make a couple different patterns as well, all with this these different cotton jerseys. Um, so I'm excited to kind of play around with that, explore that, hack the pattern. That'll be a lot of fun. Um, and then share with you guys sort of some of the, you know, features and benefits of cotton jersey, how it performs, and we'll just kind of, you know, experience that whole thing together. So um, those, that's really all I bought this whole month was stuff for the patio and then that for this little iris week that I'm making up. I'm just gonna start making up my own holidays and celebrating them by myself. It's it's fine with me. Crinkle Rayon Week, party of one, has been great. It's been a lot of fun. Who knows? Maybe next year more people will want to join Crinkle Rayon Week. Now we can move on to the rapid fire questions. And this is where I tell you guys 
what I'm watching, what I'm reading, my latest obsession, and something new that I'm trying. So what I'm watching, and you guys might be on this train also, but it's this show called Alone, and it is currently still running on the History Channel, but they have seasons one and two on Prime, Amazon Prime. They have season six on Netflix. And then if you have a cable subscription, you can watch uh, seasons three, four, five, and seven on the History Channel app. You just have to watch the commercials. You guys, this show is like changing my life. Like, I love reality competition shows to begin with. Like, I, all of them. Like, I love them all. Um, but this is something else. So basically what they do is they take 10 people, 10 survival experts, not just people like me, but survival experts, people know who know how to keep themselves alive in the jungle, and they drop them off with video camera equipment, 10 items that they were able to pick from a list of 40 and a, a, a predetermined set of items that everybody gets to have. Drop them off on Vancouver Island where they are miles away from each other, where they cannot get to each other at all. And last man standing gets $500,000. What an exceptional concept because they don't know who's still in the competition. They're really just taking it day by day and trying to do their absolute best. So things that I am learning from this show that have nothing really to do with like survival skills. Like, yes, I have learned some things where if for some reason I ended up stranded in the woods somewhere, I might make it a couple of hours now how to maybe build a shelter, how to get food, how to survive for a few hours until someone can come rescue me. But outside of that, so many lessons from this show are just being applied to my life in general. Um, and I don't wanna give away too, too much, but these people are able to make incredible, incredible, useful, cool things in addition to things that they need to survive. Also, they are out there completely alone. They do not have a cameraman. They don't have a producer, nobody. They don't see another person for weeks and weeks and weeks. So being alone for that amount of time, you know, you really can get into your thoughts and you can really start to miss people and things and you realize all the stuff that you took for granted. And so it makes me think about my own life and the friends and the family that I have and just appreciating them more, even in isolation. You know what I mean? Even now when we all feel more alone than we've ever felt, um, the show is making me realize that I still have great connections. So I'm reading a book. Remember I told you guys last month I wasn't doing too good on the reading. And by reading, I mean listening because I am an audible person. Um, I had gotten into like the um, Dateline and the, and the different kind of podcast. So I got away from that a little bit and started listening to a book and it's called Such a Fun Age. It's a very interesting look at race. It's an interesting look at like economic situations. It's an interesting look at like coming of age and you know from your 20s into your 30s and what expectation is and what society. It, there's a lot kind of buried into that all in a very sort of like easy read casual, you know, nothing too, too intense. So I uh, like I said, about halfway through, maybe a little bit more. And um, I'll let you know how I like it in the end. And if you guys know me at all, then this probably won't come as a very big surprise to you. But it's Taylor Swift's new album, Folklore. So I am a huge Taylor Swift fan, like as big as any of the younger people in your life. Listening to the album and, you know, singing the sort of mood of this album, the folksy nature of the songs, you know, really just appreciating her as an artist, as a lyricist. Um, like her personal life isn't really all that interesting to me. So I'm not, I don't like her 
because of all of that stuff. I truly think that she's able to capture a feeling and a mood and a situation and put it to song in a way that like I don't relate to with any other artist. Um, so yeah, it's basically been on repeat and if I'm not listening to it, then I'm on the blogs and vlogs, you know, uh, reading about everybody else discovering like or, or interpreting the lyrics and how they're connected and what they mean to her and you know just kind of how her mind works and all of that kind of stuff it's it's really fun to be a swifty in general but uh when a new album comes out it's a whole other level of just like mayhem and madness and excitement and fun okay so what i'm trying is i told you guys last month that my my thyroid levels were finally normal and Thank God I'm feeling so much better. I even texted Dan a couple days ago and said, God, it feels so good to feel good. Like when you're going through hypothyroidism or depression or whatever it is that brings you down, oh, there's nothing better than coming out on the other side of that and feeling like all your energy come back and feeling just feeling like yourself again. But with that, I knew that I needed to start eating better and started like doing my little dance workouts. So I started this, um, this meal plan called Boss Babe, Boss, Boss something. <laughs> it's basically like a recipe book and they tell you exactly what to eat Monday through Friday, right? Um, and I just wanted that because I didn't want to think about what I was going to eat. I just wanted to look at a little chart and then the chart tell me and then I go eat that. Um, so I'm still doing that. I'm about to start week six, I think. Um, and in that meal plan are a lot of interesting foods that I've literally never eaten before. And one of them, like cottage cheese. Never had it. You might have had cottage cheese a thousand times in your life. It just never came up. It was never anything I had growing up. It was never anything any of my friends had as I started to live on my own with roommates. Like, it just never occurred to me to try cottage cheese. Um, so now that I have, I actually really like it. I got the full fat one because I knew it would taste better. Um, but they have you make this like toast with cottage cheese and banana slices and a drizzle of honey. And it is delicious. Seriously, so good. And then of course I add like cinnamon. I add a little bit of salt to it because I know that makes food taste better too. But I've been trying so many new foods with this meal plan. I'm going to give you a little bit of teaser as to what to expect in August on the channel. First of all, it's my birthday month. Yay! I turn 38 on August the 5th. I made it another year, guys. <laughs> I'm still here and I'm loving life maybe more than I ever have. Um, so that feels really good and I'm, I'm just happy to see what that kind of energy brings to my space and to my being and not to get too like hokey dokey hippie girl, but, um, you know, just kind of enjoy that moment. I have a good suspicion that we will see more of the big four, uh, fall rollouts. So we just saw Vogue's. And I think that we'll start to see more of those roll out. I do still have my indie list. I actually have one um, indie first impression done already that you guys haven't seen for a wear collection. And so I'll be interspersing those in with the big four as they roll out their new collections that following Wednesday if you're a hem cider or Friday if you're not. Um, I'll just do whatever first impression comes up. So if a, a, a big four release came out, that'll be the one you see. And if not, then you'll see the next one that's on my randomized um, indie list. I am also working with a new company. It's an app called Graphy. And it's a lot like Blueprint. So we remember Craftsy, right? And then Craftsy was bought by Blueprint. And then a couple of months ago, Blueprint said that they were shutting down. But then you got another email that said that they were coming back. So I don't even fully understand the status with Blueprint right now. But Graphy is a lot like that, except it's all video content. So think about like sew alongs and tutorials for sewing from me 
on an app. I don't have all the details or the whole schedule yet or anything like that. But if you know anyone that wants to learn how to sew from like the very, very beginning stages, I'm talking like picking out a sewing machine, um, tell them about graphy. And at the end of my graphy, they'll have a garment to show for it as well. So that'll be a lot of fun. So you'll have to stay tuned for more information about that as it comes available. But like I said, it'll be, it'll be really quick. So I also have a Cricut tutorial coming for you guys this month. I'm actually going to be showing you how to make this cutie little pillow that I made on my Cricut maker. So that'll be fun. It'll be a full tutorial on how to make a pillow just like this. Um, and then what else? Oh, I'm going to be doing some live streams. Okay. I'm going to be doing some live streams that are like, ask me anything. Um, and I'm doing it through Patreon for the hem ciders. So if I haven't given you enough reasons to become a hem cider yet, maybe this will be the one. <laughs> but um, yeah, it'll be like an ask me anything format where I get people to submit questions a day or two beforehand, and then I will answer them live streaming where you guys can comment and we can interact with each other back and forth. Even though I'm the only one that can be heard, um, you know, everyone else just types into a chat box. It was still fun to engage like that back and forth. Cause you know, most of the time it's just me sitting here in front of a camera and I don't have any idea what you guys are saying behind your computer screens, but now you can chat and we can like talk back and forth. So it's kind of fun. Um, so I'm going to be doing my very first one this Thursday, um, 5 30 PM Eastern standard time in the U S. So, uh, head over to Patreon, become a hem cider, and then come Thursday, you guys will get the, well, before Thursday, you'll get the link for where the live stream will be. And it streams through YouTube, so um, you're able to use the YouTube chat function. Just gets promoted on Patreon and nowhere else. That way the link is, um, it only works for patrons. So I think that that's it. This has been a very rambly video. Um, but I hope you guys liked it and I hope you guys liked learning a little bit more about what I've got going on in my life. Um, please leave some comments, some commentary, some feedback. Um, if you've got any advice for me on my garden, if you've got any well wishes for Sunny, please leave those. We could use all your love and prayers. Not necessarily so much that he has like a long, 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 long life, but that the life that he does have left is peaceful and painless. That is going to do it for me today before I tear up too, too much. And I will see you all very soon. Bye.